Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and welcome back for part two of our video series dealing with the lab exercise formula succession and depositional sequences. So in the previous video we had been looking at question one which requires you to identify a selection of fossils from each of the sample locations one to ten and to use those to date each of the sample locations and you're going to put this information into this table here. I'm just going to point this out again for formation two and formation three, you will notice there are two sample locations. So the age of your, that particular uh, formation may be a range. So it may be, let's say, Ordovician to Silurian rather than just Ordovician. Now, once you have the ages in this table here, you're going to be moving on to question two. And so question two is going to ask you about the type of boundary between each of the formations. So you'll notice that you have the boundary marked out here on the left and you're going to uh, write down the type of boundary over here on the right hand side. So the first boundary is actually the boundary between the Precambrian and Formation 1. So it's this boundary coming through here between the orange and the purple. Now um, you have three possible options. It can be a fault, it can be an unconformity uh, or it can be a conformable boundary. So in the case of a fault, the thing you're going to have to wonder about is which type of fault is it? Is it going to be a normal fault, a reverse slash thrust fault, or is it going to be a strike slip fault? So you're not only going to tell me that it's a fault, but you're also going to try and identify the specific type of fault. So if you remember, in the case of a normal fault, your down thrown block is going to be dropping down relative to the other block. In the case of a thrust fault, you have a block of rock being pushed over the top. And in the case of a strike slip fault, they're simply moving past each other without any relative change in height. Now, in the case of unconformities, you have four possible options disconformity, nonconformity, angular unconformity, and paraconformity. So, uh, in the case of a nonconformity, that occurs when you have sedimentary rocks in contact with either igneous or metamorphic rocks. That's the definition of a nonconformity. In the case of an angular unconformity, you're going to have uh, tilted layers of rock below the unconformity, and you're going to have horizontal layers of rock above the unconformity. In the case of a disconformity, the layers of rock are going to be horizontal both above and below the unconformity but the unconformity itself is going to be irregular it's going to be uh, uneven a paraconformity is similar to a disconformity in that the layers of rock above and below the unconformity are going to be horizontal but the unconformity surface itself is going to be flat so it's just going to look like a bedding plane or a contact between two layers of rock. There's going to be no unevenness to it. And so paraconformities are often pretty difficult to spot and you can only see them once you've dated the layers of rock and you realize, oh, uh, there's actually a gap in the rock record here. So something's been lost. Now, as I was saying, in the case of the first boundary, you are looking at the boundary here between formation one, which is a sedimentary rock, and these Precambrian rocks here, which are clearly labeled as Archean metamorphic, which should hopefully give you quite a large hint about uh, what type of contact you have between the metamorphic Archean rocks and the sedimentary rocks of Formation 1. And so obviously you're then going to note, is it a fault, is it an unconformity, or is it a conformable contact in the box here? If it's a fault, you're going to tell me what type of fault, normal, reverse thrust, or strike slip. Uh, in the case of it being an unconformity, you're going to tell me whether it's a disconformity, a nonconformity, an angular unconformity, or a paraconformity. If the contact is conformable, you don't have to give me any additional information, you just have to say conformable. Now, as you're moving through your sequence, you might spot that maybe portions of the rock record are missing. So, for argument's sake, let's say that Formation 4 dates to the Ordovician and Formation 5 dates to the Devonian. Well, clearly there is missing rock in between because there's no Silurian. And so that's going to tell you that the contact between 4 and 5 must therefore be an unconformity. And so then you're going to have to work out what type of unconformity it is. 
Now, um, in the case of conformable contacts, what you're going to see is you're going to see a steady and consistent progression in the age of the rocks. So let's say that formation uh, four here dates to the Ordovician. Formation five dates to the Silurian. Well, we know the Silurian follows the Ordovician. That would suggest there is no missing rock there. And as such, we would classify that contact between four and five as conformable because we have the progression in the ages of the rocks that we would expect if we were just moving our way up through the geologic time scale. Now, when we are looking at the uh, different layers of rock, it does get a little bit complicated over here when we're looking at formation six and formation seven. So that's going to be this box down here because you'll notice formation six occurs here and it also occurs down here. OK, so something's clearly going on. So when it comes to defining the contact between Formation 6 and Formation 7, you actually have a couple of possible options. Are you defining this contact down here? Or are you defining this contact up here? OK, so you don't really have a lot of information down here. So when you are defining the contact, I would suggest you focus on this region right here where you have formation six and formation seven in contact. However, if you feel like uh, classifying this portion here and this portion down here, please feel free to go ahead. Just make sure you clearly uh, tell me which portion you are classifying as what. So what portion are you classifying this as and what are you classifying this portion as. So please make sure you're clear and you separate them so I can see uh, your thought process. And so that's pretty much it for part two. So relatively straightforward. All you're doing is you are just working out what's the contact between each of the formations. Is it a fault? Is it an unconformity? Or is it a conformable contact? And so this is one of the powers of dating our layers of rock using fossils because even if we have a paraconformity which is nearly impossible to spot we can work out that it's there by dating each of the formations and suddenly thinking oh there's a portion of the rock record which is missing between formation four and formation five we must therefore have an unconformity and when we look at that unconformity and we see that it's a relatively smooth unconformity we would then say right that's a paraconformity okay so the final question is question three and so question three is looking at the six depositional sequences that occurred across north america so we have the soak the tippecanoe the kaskaskia the absaroka the zuni and the tejas and if you look uh, we, uh look back through your notes you will see that you do have age ranges for each of these depositional sequences and so what are you going to do? So for each of the formations, formation one to formation eight, you are going to list the depositional sequence that it would be part of. So let's say that formation one was deposited during a period where, let's say, the Tippecanoe was actively forming. And as such, you would say formation one, right? It's part of the Tippecanoe sequence. So you would write Tippecanoe in the box there. Now, some of the formations, the ages of them, will actually straddle uh, different depositional sequences. So if that happens and you have a formation that could have formed uh, in two or more depositional sequences, that's OK. Just list all the depositional sequences that it could be part of in the box. Now, to be clear, please don't try and game the system and just put all six in. I will give you zero. OK. Uh, the final possibility is that maybe the formation that you are looking at did not form during one of these depositional sequences. In that case, please just leave the cell blank. Don't write anything in there. Just leave it empty and you'll get a mark for that. OK, so that's it for this lab exercise. So thank you for watching and have a good day.